Hi. So recently someone put up a post saying Mad VR can't do 23.976 frame rate. Hmm. Of course, this piqued my curiosity. Let's talk about 23.976. Have we been framed? Now, you know us, we like to dig out the facts. And when we see a post like that, it sort of turns on the Sherlock Holmes in us. Now, before we go into the main story, let's dig up some history. Film has traditionally been 24 frames per second, and we're talking about real film here, celluloid that looks like this. It has frames and sprocket holes, and is mainly, as I said, run at 24 frames per second. The sprocket wheels dragged the film through a gate, the shutter opens on each frame, and this is repeated, yep, 24 times a second. Why 24? Well, because any faster meant you needed more frames, which meant you needed more physical film, which meant more money. And also, they worked out that 24 frames, as they saw it, represented true motion. It was fast enough to fool the eye, and yet had natural motion blur. Now, if you don't think motion blur is natural, try waving your hand in front of your face like this, or like this. See the blur? Okay, it's natural for us. Often we don't notice it because we track the items with our eyes, but it's definitely there. And this was all fine until TV and the Americans came along and they built NTSC. We have known it as never twice the same color. And this was all for TV. Now, this has a nominal frame rate of 29.976. I'm going to geek out a bit here. It displays fields at 59.94 hertz and a single field frame corresponds to two video fields. So, the 3-2 pull-down method, which you can look up. If you Google 3-2 pull-down, you'll find out all about it. This would be used on 24 frame per second film, which would allow us to present it at 30 frames per second. Now, this is, of course, still faster than the NTSC standard, so they'd have to slow it down a bit. This occurred during the telecine process, that's the transfer process, where 24 frame per second film was slowed to 23.976 frames per second, and then the 3-2 pull-down was applied, which caused the video to play back at the correct frame rate for NTSC. So, 23.976 is entirely an artifact of getting things to display more or less accurately on NTSC televisions. And for TVs that used the 25 frames per second refresh rate, this would have to be generally sped up a bit rather than going through a different and more convoluted process to get it to display correctly on TVs for that standard, which of course was PAL. One more thing. This is not at all helped by the difference between FPS, frames per second, and Hertz, which is technically cycles per second, and it's made worse by the fact that PCs called 23.976, 23, and video calls 23.976, 24, and then there's 24, which is called 24. So, hmm. Anyway, me being me, I got right onto the engineers, and this was their reply. And I suppose you can't blame them for being a little bit defensive. And they said, Envy can do perfect 23.976, 24, 25, 29.970, 30, 50, 59.940, and 60, at both 1080p and 4K. They went on to say, before we go any further, perfect needs to be defined though. The HDMI CTA specs give us exact timings for 24, 30, and 60, but they don't provide exact timings for 23.976, 29.970, or 50.940. Instead, CTA says that we should simply divide the 24.00 pixel clock by 1.001, so we get 24 divided by 1.001, which equals, you ready for this? 23.976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023976023
But that applies to any, any device at all. Mad VR, Lumigen, any other equipment, it doesn't matter. On top of that, no hardware clock chip is perfect. They all drift to some extent. Now, let's say the source device pixel clock chip runs slightly faster than the product's pixel clock chip. That means there are more video frames coming into the MV than the MV sends out. In this case, at some point, the video frames start to pile up. So MV has to drop one once in a while, as does anything else. The fact is that pixel clocks are never perfect, as we said, which means practically the video frames coming in from the source device will never run at exactly the same speed as the video frames coming out of it. So, as we said, this means that once in a blue moon, MV either has to drop or repeat a frame to keep things in sync. However, this is really rare, like maybe two to three frames for the entire movie. So, depending on how much the source device versus the MV clock chips differ, that will depend on how many frames are actually needed to be dealt with. Anyway, MV is pretty clever in this regard, and what it does is it takes those frames and hides them in a scene change so they are completely invisible. Now, it does seem that people get confused. The person who made, sent this post out seems to think that MV can only do 24 frames per second out, but not 23.976, and that as a result, um, the MV has to repeat frames all the time. But that's simply incorrect. It can do 23.976 just fine. Furthermore, the claims are that we would have to skip frames, and that wouldn't be true even if the assumption would otherwise be correct, which it isn't. Now, if we're running with 24.00 output refresh rate, we'd not have to skip frames, but instead, we'd probably have to repeat frames. But anyway, look, there's a whole lot more to this, but it would take me into the domain of comparing one product with the other, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. I really just wanted to focus on the issues surrounding 23.976. All right, so I hope this shines a bit of light on frame rates and refresh rates and has demystified things just a little. Thanks for listening, and as always, please do like, subscribe, and also take a look at our Patreon page. We'd love to have you sign up and join us, and we'll see you again soon.